If you're studying universal principles, if you're studying success, you eventually have to come to the inevitable conclusion of the role that the mind plays in all of this, right? In Hermetic Law, which is the, the most ancient of the ancient wisdom literature ever found, the famous emerald tablet that they talk about in The Secret, that, that was her, Hermetic Law. And, and the first precept in Hermetic Law is that the all is mind, the universe is mental. Now, when they say the all, they're referring to God, to infinite intelligence, to uh, source energy, whatever you, you choose to call it. So the all, or God, or, or the infinite, is mind. The entire universe is mental. And when you study the mind, you see that, I mean, you know, every wisdom literature says something to the effect of, and God made man in his image and likeness. And so what does that mean? If, if God is spirit, right, which is not, by the way, don't anybody get offended because spirit is the highest level of mind and matter is the lowest level of mind. So if God is spirit or the ultimate highest level of mind, okay, doesn't have a body, you haven't seen him or her. <laughs> so you've never seen God and, and how can man be made in, in God's image and likeness? Well, we're made in his image and likeness because we are mind. We are, we are spirits, okay, that have a mind. The lower level of, 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 a higher level of mind is spirit, and the lower level of spirit is mind. And we inhabit a body. And so we are, we are many creators. We're distribution centers for the power of God. We're individualizations of God. And so mind is, is of the ultimate importance. And when you start when you start looking at uh, how mind works and mind functions, you know, mind has two, two components to it. I mean, more than that, but at least in the typical sense of what psychology studies and the average person can understand, um, mind has the conscious aspect and the subconscious aspect. It's really not two minds, it's two aspects of one mind, but sometimes to understand it easier, it's, you know, it's easier to kind of separate it and pretend that they're two minds. But, uh, you know, the mind's kind of like an iceberg. Um, the, uh, the tip of it is, is above the, the water, right? And the, most of it is underneath the water. So maybe 1% is above the water, 99% is underneath the water. And, and the mind is like that. The conscious part is that little tip above the water. And uh, the subconscious is the big, huge part underneath the, the water. And the water is the line of, of conscious awareness, okay? And so um, the, the real powerhouse is the subconscious. I mean, the conscious mind can process, uh, they say, about 15 uh, bytes of information per second. That's pretty good, 15 bytes of information per second. The subconscious, however, can process 15 million <laughs> bytes of information per second. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty massive. So really, it's more than 99% if you, if, if, if you do the math. Think about it. You're, you're not sitting there saying heart pump, you know, or <laughs> lungs breathe, breathe blood, keep circulating, keep You know, we're, we're, we're not doing that. So who's doing it? You know, what? What's going on? How's that happening? Okay, I mean, the miracle of life is, I mean, it's fantastic. It's huge how everything works with such incredible precision. Um, but if you stop and think about it, so the subconscious is, is in charge of all of that, right? And it's also the place where all our beliefs are stored. They're warehoused in our subconscious, if you will. Everything that we assume to be true, right? I mean, what is reality? I mean, Reality is an interpretation. The reality that you and I talk about all the time is really an interpretation. There is an absolute reality, but absolute reality is God and universal law, universal principles. That's the only absolute reality there is, okay? The reality that we talk about when we say, oh, is this true, is that true? Oh, no, this is what happened. No, this is what happened. No, this is the right thing. No, this is the truth. All that is perceptual perceptual, nothing but an interpretation. That's why, that's why there's wars fought on this earth. That's why different people like different things, because it's all an interpretation. But see, that interpretation and those beliefs where they are housed is in the subconscious mind. 
Now, the subconscious mind also happens to be the connecting link to God, you know, which is, and I hate to use, with God, I hate to use the word subconscious. The true word is subjective, okay? And, and conscious is really objective, so it's objective mind, subjective mind. All of this is to make it easier to understand, okay? But uh, the subjective mind of God is connected to our subjective mind or our subconscious. And so uh, th that's why what we believe in our heart, right, that, that axiom or scripture that says as a man or woman believes in his or her heart, so is he. What is the heart? It's not the pa-pum, 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 right? It, it is the essence, the core of your being, you know, your automatic portion of yourself, which is the subconscious mind. And so uh, th that is what creates your, your life automatically. And um, one of the interesting things is that as you talk about the cycle of life, which we mentioned beforehand, is um, uh, when the conditioning took place back early on, you know, like I said, from zero minus nine months to about seven years of age, uh, that's the time in your life where you live basically subjectively. I mean, you, there's a critical factor of the mind, which is kind of the gatekeeper between the conscious and the subconscious. And that critical factor is what, you know, is, 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 is the perceptual filter, right? Those perceptual filters that we talked about in the cycle of life that get built up. You know, the critical factor is that, okay? It, it's taught by the conscious mind. You know, it, it, it's, it's then conditioned by the subconscious and the beliefs that we already have, what we've already accepted is true. That's why it's so hard to change a belief. And so that critical factor then, you know, starts setting up the roadblocks whenever new information comes in. Well, before the age of seven, you don't really have a well-developed critical factor. So that's why all information that comes prior to the age of seven, you know, uh, it just phew, goes straight down the superhighway into the subconscious mind. Uh, that's why children like repetition so much. You know, I mean, if you think back to when your kids were little, uh, I mean, I, I had three little girls early on in my life, and if, if I heard uh, if I heard the Little Mermaid sing one more time, <laughs> I was going to jump out the window because they watched it like five times a day. You know, well, that's because the subconscious mind is. Is, is subjective. And the interesting thing is, you know, that was all three of my girls' favorite movie, and all three of them can sing. You know, is that where it comes from? I don't know, but <laughs> kind of an interesting story. But that's the way that the subconscious mind works. And then, uh, since it is the part of you that works automatically, you say, this is real, this is true, this is right, this is the way it works. You know, I can sing, I can't sing, I'm good at sports, I stink at sports. Uh, you know, I'm a good student, I'm a terrible student, I'm terrible in math. No, I'm great in math. I'm good. All these things, all, and by the way, you know, what is a belief? A belief is nothing more than a generalization about something. It is a sense of certainty about something, right? And so these beliefs, these sense of certainties about the validity or trueness of something uh, are, are, are housed in our subconscious they perform automatically, okay? They direct our lives automatically. And so when you're getting results that you don't like in your life, you know, best thing to do is go, go check what beliefs you have related to that. I mean, I tell people all the time, if you have problems with money, if you have problems making money, check what beliefs you have that are holding you back about money. Because I guarantee you, if you got money worries and money problems, you have some beliefs about money, okay, that are holding you back. Be it that it's evil, that you know, you're know you gonna go to hell if you have a lot of it, your friends aren't gonna like you, you may lose your wife and your kids, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So subconscious mind, powerhouse. And you know, I've been studying the mind for, uh, golly, over 25 years, 27 years. And uh, in all that time that I've been studying it, I'm never, it never ceases to amaze me, the power of the mind. And not only that, after 27 years of studying it, I believe I'm just beginning to scratch the surface of it. That's how vast and huge the topic is. And by the way, I also believe that the biggest area of research, the biggest area of opportunity, the biggest undiscovered uh, land, the biggest un, unexplored space in the universe is not, you know, space out there, the galaxy and all that is what's inside the human mind. That's the power of that.